Uh, so next, we'd like to introduce Dr. Shrisha Heba, a consultant gastroenterologist uh, from University Hospital of North Midlands, uh, who will be giving a talk on snare tip assisted resection of colorectal lesions. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction and invitation. Right, so before I go to the, the technique as such and regarding the, the snare tip assisted resection, or what I call as a star technique, so just let's briefly look at how we manage colorectal polyps. So if you see a small lesion, a small polyp, so either we cold snare it, or if it's a very minuscule one, we can even cold biopsy it. It's slightly larger, or if it's on the fold, we can just lift it up a bit, and then again cold snare it, or again hot snare it. A polyp with a pedicle, we can put a snare across it and then hot snare it. A slightly larger polyp, but which is completely benign, uh, these polyps can be lifted, and then we can do using different snares, either piecemeal resection, but in the present day, many people also prefer to uh, do it underwater technique without any lifting. So just because a polyp lifts well, can we just put a snare around it and resect it? No, I think it's important that we assess the polyp in detail, look at the morphology, look at the patterns in detail before deciding what's the best option for this polyp in this patient. So we have Paris classification to look at the morphology, the most important of which is the one in the down below, which is the, the 2C or a depressed lesion, which is a marker of uh, possible cancer. This one lesion is definitely a cancer, but so whenever it's a depressed lesion, we have to look carefully. So this lesion, again, what we call as a LST granular, if it's a one centimeter flat polyp, more than one centimeter, and these, these lesions are benign. But when the LST granular lesions have developed nodules in them, then there's a high risk of harboring malignancy in these ones, and they have to be dealt differently. Or lesions more than one centimeter, which has a smooth surface, what we call as LST non-granular, again, is a high risk of malignancies, and these need to be dealt, dealt differently as well. So again, we have to look at the patterns on the surface. If you're looking at the Kuda pit pattern, the most important of which is the type five pit pattern where the vasculature has been affected. So which means that again, there is a risk of malignancies higher. So if the lesions as a depressed component, a type five pit pattern, LST granular with nodules or a LST non-granular, so these lesions have a high risk of malignancies. So if we have to make sure that these we have resected early cancers in these lesions. They have to be resected submucosally in one piece. That's because if it's an early lesion, where only about first 1,000 microns, or what we call as SM1 lesion, and there's a good resection margin between the end of the cancer and the polyp margin, then the lymph node invasion metastasis is about less than 1% negligible, which means that endoscopically this has been curative. So these lesions, well, we ideally should be resected by ESD, where completely in one piece, uh, with deep submucosal uh, uh, dissection. They had different knives uh, for this. There are different techniques which has evolved recently. If it's a smaller lesions, and there's a technique also known as a knife-assisted resection, so using the knife to do an incision uh, around it, and then you engage a snare in the groove, and then create a pseudopolyp and resect the lesion in one piece. So what I'm describing here is a slightly modified technique, which is using the tip of the snare. When I say this is not a new technique, in fact, if you look at the history of ESD, people started doing ESD with tip of the snare before various knives evolved. So, video please. Yeah, so I'm going to just go look at the technique of how we do this. So this is a smaller lesion. So if you're looking at a suspicious lesion, what's important is that this technique is used only for about less than two centimeter lesion. So this is a smaller lesion, so a, where the lesion has got a good lift. The tip of the stiff snare is projected out by two to three millimeter, and an incision is done at a deeper submucosal level, and then you extend it along, just like a knife, uh, around the uh, circumferentially uh, along the polyp. And then you use the, the snare and then engage the snare in the groove of the, where you've done the incision. Yeah, just completing the circumferential incision now. So you're engaging it and then catching the, the snare in the groove. And now you're creating like pseudo pedicle. 
and then resecting the lesion at a deeper submucosal level. So where, where is this technique useful? So if you're looking at a suspicious lesion, which is again, again less than two centimeters, uh, like in this one, a smaller poly, but you can see it's got horns, which means that it's very really likely to be an early cancer and it lifts well. Making a groove and then again extending it circumferentially. Right, again, this was a SM1 lesion and had an R0 resection. There was a good margin between the cancer, about 4.5 millimeter, and less than one millimeter was the submucosa involved. So this was a curative resection. It's also useful, now this was a background of a colitis scarred lesion. It lifted, but it was difficult to engage the snare and catch it and then resect it. So this technique is useful. I'm just using the tip of the snare to make a bit of a groove around the lesion, and now not completely, only partly, and then using the snare to engage it there, suck it. Yeah, so it's, so it's useful in a, in a scar, in a very, very flat lesions like that. It's a bit of an APC the tiny fragments. You can see there's lots of areas where I had to use this tip of the snare, but it was completely resected. So this was a lesion where previously was attempted EMR, it was incompletely resected. As you can imagine, the central part, this is not a cancer, but central part is completely scarred. So the, the peripheral ones can easily be engaged with the snare and, and you can resect that. But the central part, because of the scar, it's very difficult to engage it with the snare and then uh, do a resection completely. So here again, I'm injecting underneath that li little bit in, in the center. And then just, this is a benign lesion, so I'm not worried about getting the lesion in one piece. So just using the tip of the snare so that to help me engage the snare in the groove. And had a good, good outcome. Can you just play the video, please? So this is another case where uh, this was a very small polyp in the rectum, but when, we were, when it was resected, this was an R0 early cancer. But then a couple of, uh, the, the previous endoscopists had put two clips in. Four months later, another polyp had developed underneath that, which was completely benign, and the two clips were stuck underneath the polyp. So again, this was injected uh, around it. So use, again, using the tip of the snare to make a bit of a groove. Again, it's, this was biopsied beforehand, and this was confirmed to be low-grade dysplasia. So the aim here was not to take it out completely in one piece, but the aim was to resect it. Uh, yeah, because the main problem was the, the two clips which were stuck. But yeah, it looks like I managed to get it in one piece again with this one. So polyp with two horns. Right, so this is a process. I've collected the data prospectly for the last seven years now, and all the per procedures have been performed by a single endoscopist. And 98 lesion has been resected. When I say seven centimeter, those are the ones which are like a scar lesions or something. But if it is a, I I'll come to that. So the suspicious lesion has been about 60 and 20 turned out to be cancers, and 10 were high-grade dysplasias. Of the 20 cancers, the average size which I've taken out is about 8 to 22 millimeter. I burned my fingers when I have attempted to take out a lesion which was more than 2 centimeter, so 2.5 to 3 centimeter. When I tried this technique, it was incompletely resected. There was a perforation. patient had a hemicolectomy. So the main thing is that if you're doing this technique, it has to be less than 2 centimeter, ideally. So 12 had curative resection, which required no further treatment, and have 10 follow-up data for more than a year, no recurrent lesions or any cancers. Seven had uh, poor prognostic features, and six have had surgery. 
Of the scarred lesions, I've taken out about 22, and again, follow-up data in 20, and no recurrent lesions. So in 16 cases, I've used it to aid resection of very flat polyps, uh, SSL, some SSL lesions as well. So follow-up data in, again, 12, no recurrent lesions. So complications-wise, apart from the, the perforations, I've had two delayed bleeding, which were managed uh, conservatively. So in conclusion, so this technique, when, well, this is, uh, as I said, there are different, there are several different knives and so on, but, but still, this technique has, still has a role in certain cases, as we have seen. So, but it needs a bit of an experience about complex EMR and a little bit of an ESD to understand the, the space. You don't have to do a deep dissection, but still to understand where you're cutting. It's, you need to have that much of uh, uh, comfort into an EMR and ESD. But it's very effective and inexpensive and alternative technique in managing selective complex colorectal polyps. Thank you. Any, any questions from the audience? Yes, uh, great talk. talk. Um, so just a couple of technical uh, questions, really. Uh, what, what, what are the diathermy settings that you use, and do you ever use uh, the cap uh, to help to assist you with the, with the technique? Yeah, because uh, the, uh, uh, regarding the cap, because I'm not doing a deep dissection underneath that, and it's a very smaller lesion which I'm picking up for suspicious lesions, or even if it's a scarred one, or I'm just making a little bit of a groove, not, not circumferential in those cases. I personally don't, didn't feel the need for using a cap because I'm not going underneath that. I'm just doing a little bit of an incision. And again, I'm picking a lesion where I have lifted it well, which means that um, I just need a bit of an incision. Regarding the diathermy setting, well, Erbia has revolutionized how we do it. So it's, it's completely safe. It, it, it gives you a bit of a, even if your settings are slightly different because it, it changes your, uh, the voltage and so on, depending on that it will. Uh, so even if I keep an endocut three or endocut two, I just use sometimes an, what's called tapping techniques. So I keep endocut three, but I just keep on tapping continuously, which helps me to form the groove. So I don't change it to endocut one or something. I still keep the same setting. Thank you. Just uh, we were discussing about this uh, question. I'm going to ask you now. But you, uh, there's some. So uh, the point you made about size, I think, is very important because uh, exactly. over two. So my, my first worst uh, perforation ever in a polypectomy came with a three centimeter polyp we had been previously tattooed. So there was a higher risk of complications, and there was a big perforation. The patient needed surgery. So what, what comments yeah. you have to, to the size again for for the audience who may, may be yeah. very interested in applying the technique, but there are some pitfalls. Exactly, and then I said that the three centimeter one was the wrong size for me to pick up the one which had a bad perforation. So it has to be less than two centimeter, and also most important is that the lesion has to lift very very well, especially if you are taking out a su su suspicious lesion. So SM1 lesions, a small one, they will definitely lift well. If it's not lifting well, then it's more it's more deeper than that. So please don't attempt it. Uh, there was a question from from the audience or online about the efficacy of this technique also for smaller lesions less than two centimeters as compared to standard uh, resection. If I know at least one, one paper because we're uh, from Dr. Yoshida in Japan where they compared two and three centimeter polyps where they, they did either with circumferential incision or or the standard technique and the, even for smaller lesions uh, this technique is superior. So what do you think, even for smaller lesions, uh, you, we should be applying this technique, maybe technically challenging? Yeah, I think lesions. the most important thing in, in this is about identifying that this is a suspicious lesion. But I think you, you do come across an MDT where people have just resected a polyp, which is less than two centimeter or, because, or less than one centimeter, and then it has turned out to be a cancer, and then the cancer is at the margin, and then because it's less than one centimeter, you have not tattooed it. So I think most important than the technique is to identify the lesion properly and say this is suspicious, and if this is suspicious, <coughs> deal a bit differently. Uh, so if it is less than one centimeter as well, I will said there have been eight millimeter one, which was a, the, the picture which I showed was an eight millimeter cancer. And if that was resected just with a snare and there was a resection margin, there was a cancer there, then you'll say. But I have no data, I don't know personally about the data comparing just doing a polypectomy for less than one centimeter, which is a cancer, versus this technique. Do you know anything, Adolfo? Not for that size, no. Not for that size. 
No, but anyway, it's very important, I think, for the audience, especially young endoscopists, that the diagnosis is most important. Exactly, of more than, more than yeah. the, the diagnosis. More? Three. No Trisha, questions. great talk, great video. I know that we're uh, running short of time. Time is money in endoscopy. How, do you, how much time does it take, you know, just for removing a two centimeter polyp? Do you think, just put, uh, do a bit of lift, put a snare, take it off? Do you think there's a, does this take more time than a standard uh, sort of on block EMR? So, no, I, 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 uh, uh, I consent for the uh, hybrid ESD as well when I'm doing a BCS list or a standard colonic EMR list. And I personally don't think, well, now with, your, with our level of experience with EMR after doing so many uh, years now, so it doesn't take significantly much time because you're, is, as you're picking the lesions properly, if you're looking, picking the lesions properly, these are well-lifted lesions, so just forming a groove will not take much time and you're picking a smaller than two centimeters. But again, I think if you're starting new, you're, uh, I would, rather than picking up for a suspicious or a cancerous lesion, so send it for an ESD or somebody who's doing it, but if you're trying it after doing some EMR, I would suggest that you pick up where you are uh, benign lesions, just doing a little bit of a groove on the side to engage your snare. That might be the best way to start rather than picking a cancerous lesions. Thank you very much, Shusha. Thank you. It was a discussion.